Welcome back to Digital Devil Saga 2. Last time we defeated the Trivana twice. It's kind of a record for the, um... Oh, actually, this just reminds me of a Pokemon dungeon. Some of the Rocket Executives in Gold and Silver were fought multiple times in the same dungeon. So, I guess it's like that, too. Uh, you also fight Lysander in, um... Uh, Pokemon X and Y. His second and third battles come pretty close to each other. Actually, all three of uh, his fights come pretty close to each other. But anyway, uh, yeah, we fought them, we beat them twice, and uh, we blocked their Mega Electric skill. And now it's time to head on, but the party has an ominous feeling about what's coming next. And they're gonna be right. Well, I mean, you'll, you'll know what's gonna happen if you've seen the thumbnail and title for this, but... We've got some beds here. It almost looks like this is a hospital ward. Oh no, someone's uh, committed the unforgivable horror of leaving their Jack Frost plushie face down. But we have a save point right after the previous save point. Again, just... just this isn't ominous at all. Just gotta quickly check my map to see if I'm missing any chests. I don't think I am. No. Pretty sure there's actually nothing uh, in this floor. Except for what we came here for. There are random encounters, though. Okay, now I have an upgraded boost spell, which just one-shots them, which is actually kind of bad. Which means I can't really devour them. Just through here. Here! Right turn, there is medical room. No entry to unauthorized persons. The cultivation capsule. Yeah, we remember this from that earlier cutscene. Oh, actually, yeah, I was like, oh wait, isn't there a heal point here? But no, the heal point's actually after this. Looks like there's a broken off grate here. But, before you go into the medical room, make sure you're prepared. And by prepared, I mean ice skills. Ice skills are going to be very, very important here. So, especially ice boost. We will not be needing any fire at all. So, I'd rather have uh, Mabufu. Frost Breath is too unreliable. Also, uh, Void Fire. Void Fire is going to be nice to have too. Uh, Roland also starts with Void Fire, so he can take that over Devil Feast. You're mostly here for Taunt. I guess I can put Mabufu on you. And I guess Ice Boost. And you can take Sukukasha. Basic physical attacks might also be important here, though the enemies here will have counter, so uh, you might get smacked in the face a bit for it. But okay. It appears to be a medical room. Go inside. Sarah's not here. Uh, not this again. Heat? What are you... So that's heat. I wasn't expecting such hatred. that a song devour her act like you're losing i'll get sarah back we'll tear you apart you fat freak hey say something surf something have you gone mad I've made my choice what's wrong with you he has agreed to cooperate of his own free will Sarah my name is Margot Cuvier 
You may call me Madame. You've already been made aware that you are just AIs that Sarah created. But unlike the others, you were all special to her. Because of something unfortunate. That's why Heat is helping us. Ugh, heat? This is just another act, right? At this rate, you'll never be anything but marionettes. The only difference is who's controlling you. Meaning what, exactly? The person who's been pulling your strings is... Jenna Angel. Sarah's natural parent. Angel? She's Sarah's mother? Her father as well, to be precise. She convinced the Lokapala to abduct Sarah so she could bring us both down. What could she be scheming? I too have questions. What is your goal? Mankind, because of its own foolishness, is facing total extinction. Man's insatiable greed destroyed the environment which had protected us from God's malignant data. We tried to help, but our warnings were ignored. You mean the QVA syndrome? Ah, so then you altered God to purge the sinners? That was an unfortunate accident. I want only to sow mankind's seed for the future. Otherwise, we will vanish from Earth entirely. What we need is order, and bodies that can survive in this hostile environment. Our city does have a limit after all. So you turn everyone into demons? Just to resume living under the sun? <laughs> That's totally insane! Demons have to devour each other to survive. And if they lose control... That is why we will exercise control. The junkyard experiment provided us with an effective demon virus. Using Sarah, mental deterioration can be prevented. And so... Food supply is the only remaining concern. Oh, that's why you farmed out Fred's buddies. There are some organisms that deserve to live, and others that do not. In order to avoid past mistakes... You will decide who merits life. Order will decide. A world of tuners under our control, Nirvana, is the only way to preserve mankind. Come back to us. We can ensure you will have a peaceful life without hunger and needless killing. You said needless killing, but you didn't say no killing at all. Even though both these options seem reluctant, if you answer this one, and unlike the first game, it's the second option, you will get something later on. One thing is clear. This place is not Nirvana. A world without sadness. Where everyone lives happily in peace and need not fight for survival. That is Nirvana. On my honor, I vow that I will not stop fighting. You will pay for this hell! <sighs> I guess I have no choice. Heat, delete these bugs before they disrupt our world. Sarah will be fine, as long as you're with us. Prepare yourself. This time, we're not playing games. Do you hear me, Surf?
So first up in this boss battle, I guess, we're facing four Karma Soldiers. Let's see if I now don't really have any better uh, AoE attacks, but I do have this back by Ice Boost. Not like it's really doing a whole lot. Vile Blade should do a good amount though. Okay, nice. Uh, unfortunately, one of them survived. <laughs> really going for Gale's weakness there. Yeah, like, Gale was kind of acting like the real hero in that scene, yet more evidence that, like, Gale is sort of the real protagonist. But I'll talk more about that later, because now... Yep, we're fighting Heat in his Agni form. What's interesting is that his moveset actually quite closely resembles uh, the average late-game build on Heat. He has Power Charge, a lot of strong physical attacks, and Taunt. But he's also surrounded by these things, I believe it's pronounced Dune? Uh, so they will set up Void Ice to cover his weakness, that's the main thing they do. Also, they have a Maraki Dying combo they can do with him. Uh, apparently it's more likely to happen if Surf is not in your party. If he gets a critical, uh, the Dunes will end up using the Maraki Dying combo. But okay, I'm gonna go for Mabufu here, because you really want to take down the Tigers quickly. Like, very, 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 very quickly. Because, uh, like, they're... Otherwise, they're going to be spamming uh, weakness covering. Can go for a setting up Supercharger, though. I could go for a Taunt, but it's very risky. Uh, okay, okay, Roland has Void Fire. Gotta remember to set up the Void Fire, too. Otherwise, you may be in trouble. Uh, do I... I think I will Supercharger again. But we're not fat freaks, that, that line won't work on us. Yeah, even, uh, even like, uh, fire aside, he hits very, 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 very hard. Uh, I think I'll go for some single target damage. Still not down to red, though. Probably will have to use an item to heal soon. Yeah, let's go for the medical kit. Obviously, we don't want to underestimate Heat, because, you know, we, we fought alongside him, we know what he's capable of. Okay, good thing, it, good thing it is down to red. Void Fire back again. Uh, could Tsukaja again, but I'm going to actually go for a, um... Uh, let's go for a Frost Bomb. Yeah, still pretty brutal. Uh oh, they're probably going to... Yeah, there's Ice Drain! So, I'm not able to uh, get any press turns off of that right now. So, I may as well uh, Void Fire. Like I said, the problem with going for... Um, I like Roland's defending pose. The problem with going for physical skills is the Dunes do have counter. I don't think I want to taunt right now, though. Uh, I'm just going to go for a basic attack on you. Okay, good. One of them's dead. One of them is dead. We are down one tiger. Uh, uh, let's medical hit again. No real need for medical tools right now. It's kind of like hyper potions and early Pokemon. They're healing of overkill. Okay, good. We, we finally actually reap the benefits of having a fire shield. But now there's just one of the tigers left. Things should go a little smoother. I suppose I can set up one last Kukaja. Bufula, the Dune. Uh, let's just, yeah, let's void fire. Smack you, not quite dead yet. Thankfully we can shield that. Yeah, if you like run into this fight on your first playthrough and aren't prepared for it, uh, next time you'll probably know to bring Void Fire, so uh, it's not too bad once you have this, but uh, it's one of those where when you've been in this fight once, you generally know what to expect. Just use Void Fire a lot. Sadly, we are, uh, I mean, I mean, if you're on New Game Plus, you might have uh, have uh, Void Fizz at this point, and that could be useful too. Uh-oh, yeah, this attack is very scary. Yeah, you might have noticed that he hasn't even really missed much, even though I have Max and Karjas on. Nah, Taunt would be way too risky right now. Taunting Heat in general probably hazardous to your health. As many of our enemies in the junkyard found out. He hasn't used his own taunt yet, though. Still not even down to red. I was hoping that he gets a red this turn, but nope, okay. Oh, he has high counter. Which can miss, apparently. 
I, I do think his AI, I, 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 like, I, okay, so, like, I, I want to say that his AI does preferentially target Sur, because that would make sense. Oh, yeah, that was a stupid idea. And I believe that is him down. Yeah, there we go. It's over. Agni ran away. <laughs> Brave Sir Agni ran away. We did get a tiny bit of AP, though, for those dunes. But he's worth a lot of karma. And hey, Gale's pulled ahead of the party. We also get a Soma. Kind of makes sense, because, again, Gale was, like, the real hero of that cutscene. And now Surf can set eight skills. You should probably get to level 20 with everyone before this fight, though. Now Roland can set eight skills, and Gale can more than set a, uh, well, Gale can set eight skills, and then he has one more level on top of that. That's what I meant. I wish you could set more than eight skills. And now we're just in the room. Well, yeah, looks like Heat has gone into his full-on edgy rival phase. Roland seems to be pretty good at reading people, though. Must have made a very high insight check on Heat. Yeah, we did enough of that in the junkyard. At the very least, we didn't need to kill him. Well, not yet, at least. He's certainly come back for more. But now we can go past the convenient sensor, uh medical tube, and although there is a heal point here, this dungeon is pretty much over. There's only a very short segment left. We aren't done with story though, believe me, this is like the real story time section of the game. Okay, so we got, uh, Surf, Roland, Gale, uh... I'll put Argilla and Cielo back in the party just to get some Tentarafus going. Somebody's knocked that down. I guess that was heat in a hurry. Now I can go up to the 55th floor. Oh yeah, it was Dragonair into Dragonite that uh, was the level 55 evolution. I think it's also Pubitar into Tyranitar. I think it took until like uh, black and white for there to be a higher level evolution than that. Like a High Dragon I know evolved in the 60s and I think um, Volcarona does too. It's the court of a soldier wearing a blue armband. Somebody got here before us. But Heat's working with the society, and, well, his MO isn't really bullets, he prefers to just tear people apart with his demon form. Gunshots can be heard behind the door. Uh, well, unfortunately the Trivana is a little bit, uh, occupied right now by wallowing in their misery of defeat. Speaking of the remaining Arceras, hi there. Thank you for transforming so I can actually get AP off of you. No thank you for, uh, well thank you for missing, but yeah, no thank you for going first. Uh, oh, I took off my Tentara through combo anyway. Uh, right, uh, yet if either of you null this. Baron sometimes nulls ice from what I remember. Yeah, no, you weren't Zero Week. That was the other horseman. Yeah, you were actually weak to force. But okay, now I can actually set my stuff back. And they've set up these desks and makeshift barricade. Who are these guys? Our chief tech officer is waiting for you. So, the Karma Society? Not all of them are our enemies. We have some with red armbands rather than blue. So it's reverse Fire Emblem logic. Red is us and blue is the enemy. And sometimes you can run into encounters with these guys and they'll immediately run. I do sometimes like, uh, you know, story-based random encounters like this in RPGs. Undertale does this a bit in one of its final areas. They use random encounters for exposition. Wow, this place has seen better days. It's another red one. Well, I, I will take any Karma Society soldiers not fighting me because, uh... 
means how I don't need to get mad about wasting AP. Yeah, there's no chance in this area. It's just a straight walk to the technical director's office. Now, who could that be? Uh-oh. Angel. It seems God has not yet forsaken me. It was well worth the wait. Take the gyroplane on the roof to the lab. You will find Sarah there. Why? Why do you help us? If they have their way, mankind will repeat its mistakes. You don't have to agree. Just kill Cuvier, then we will be even. <sighs> what the hell is it you want, anyway? I want everyone to have an equal chance. The Karma Society is trying to control humanity's liberation. Liberation? Man is an aberration that suppressed karma and ignored the way. Our destiny is natural selection. The strong survive, the weak perish. What we need is not transient order, it's chaos. What of those who achieve liberation? They learn the meaning of life. To that end, you turn all of mankind into demons? So they can devour each other? <laughs> hey, what you laughing at? Asura's logic algorithm is flawless, save one side effect. Oh, and what is that? You seem to have acquired humanity. Tainted demons who become human. <laughs> what delicious irony. The universe is quite a comedian. This isn't some sick joke! You did this to us! <laughs> so then, I would have to assume you require Sarah as well. Intelligence can be a nuisance sometimes. No more questions. Jen, you mustn't hate them. No, don't leave me. Please don't, David. Director, they've broken through. You need to evacuate, now. Hurry, don't waste any time. I like how Cielo's just flying alongside the plane. Sarah's beloved children of purgatory. If you wish to help her, then you'll continue to do as I say. Director, you're under arrest for treason. By order of Yui Lowenthal. Who do you think created the demon virus? And so all those soldiers get to fight the final boss of the first game. Also, um, well, there's an example of a missile unit from Advance Wars not being a complete worthless joke. Whoops. Probably should have uh, warned us about those. But at the very least, we still managed to reach our destination. But there goes the gyroplane. So... 
yeah, that was a lot to process, but the summary is that Margot Cuvier is Shin Megami Tensei lore, and Angel is Shin Megami Tensei chaos, and, uh, that's why they both kind of want the other dead. The thing that I like about the dynamic in this game, though, is the party is set up to reject both of them by default. This is generally the way I prefer it to be handled. Because, like, in a sense, their plans are pretty much the same. It, they both revolt. They both involve all humanity turning into demons. Oh, also, you know, Roland, again, is echoing my view here. Um, they both basically, um, uh, they both basically involve turning all humanity into demons and having some part of society survive and the weak or the ones deemed unworthy by society being devoured. It's just, it depends on how they define who is unworthy in society. So, really, it is very similar, and that's why we should reject both of them. Also, like Roland says, we uh, shouldn't let one person decide the fate of all of humanity. It is very, um... It's a theme that's pretty antithetical to standard Shin Megami Tensei, and I, I do wonder if it was part of trying to make this more accessible to general audiences, while still having a lot of the gameplay themes and mechanics. It doesn't seem operational, you think? But contrary to what you might think, you actually are allowed to leave anytime you want. And from here, and we can access the laboratory dome anytime we want from now on, so we can actually go back to the other regions of, of um, the uh, Karma City. Just so that we're able to restock our items and the like. Well, uh, thankfully this guy doesn't recognize that we are the ones who are kind of part of the Rebellion-ish. As long as we can control God, there shouldn't be any problem. Yeah. Because that will totally work out for you. And this is also interesting because now they're scapegoating, essentially, immigrants. So, um... Yeah, these, these people are actually acting a lot like how some real-life people do during crises. And yeah, you're like, oh, we don't need to worry at all. And they're all like, oh, they're after our resources. It is just, there's, there's definitely social commentary here. At Matunas, or those who devour. <laughs> Yeah, that, that one doesn't actually seem to have any stripes yet, of any colour. <laughs> what does falling in love have to do with it? Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting as well, like, it's just... Both, uh, both Angel and QVA are a little bit more complex as well than the average SMT alignment reps. So, this right here, I think, is important. This is Amelia. And how do we know her name? Because... But it's important that you talk to this guy. This guy's being told that his true name is James Mason. He's gone through the Colonel Beck thing, I see. A girl named Amelia. Absolutely, we're going to agree to this. Tell her, please be happy. James was the solid that we talked to in front of the Karma Temple just before the end of the first game. This is another file transfer bonus, and it's a pretty subtle one. And for that, we get a Lotus Flower. 
Well, just be careful that you don't venture out into the sunlight and get turned to stone. So there is another part to this quest, but there are some online resources that falsely claim that if you sell this lotus flower, you won't be able to get the second reward. That's actually not true. In fact, I think it's very much implied that um, this couple wants you to sell it. There's no other reason to keep the lotus flower around. It is your main reward for doing this transfer, so I'm going to go ahead and sell it. Like, again, there is no negative effect to doing this. You will still get the second reward for the quest later. But that, but I do mean much, 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 much later. Let's see what you have to say. Men need to be strong so they can protect the important people in their lives. Did you hear that from Asbel? How are we at point-wise? Yeah, uh, 603, okay, that's actually not that bad. I mean, the next bonus is going to kind of suck, but I may as well buy all three of these. And we get a... Oh, I'll take a Revival Gem. Six hundred points. Yeah, that wasn't quite enough. I should have three hundred left. Yeah. I suppose I could make up the difference by buying some ammo. Which I could... Actually, no, I need to spend a little more than 30,000. So I'll get two Trank Shots and one Hollow Point. Exceed 2,300. Congrats, we're now rank 5. Single uh, Shot Shell Charger. Yeah, now you can buy Curse Shot... Uh, Nerve Shot, Curse Shot, Mute Shot, and Iron Shot. We can also buy Hero Rations, Medical Tools, Chakra Pots... Revival Gems. Uh, Estoma Spray and Magic Read are pretty nice. And oh boy, we have $10,000 loot boxes. The ultimate dystopia of humanity. Speaking of money though, this uh, Pyrojack has shown up in the underground city. This here... <laughs> this here's the shop, ho. What I say... Uh, what I say in the store is what... Uh, is what in the store uh, he goes that's really confusing serious business remember that he oh, I've got the items for sale a he orb that popped out of my he hat I've only got one he ho but it's yours for fifty thousand uh, dollars I can't afford that right now here's the thing this is actually very much worth it what he's selling is called an impel stone the Impulse Stone, when used, effectively acts as the only player usable version of Dragon Eye from Nocturne or Psycho Rage from this game. It gives you four blinking press turns instantly, on top of what turns you already had. This is excellent for fighting certain rare enemies, uh, as well as e against certain super bosses or regular bosses. The only downside is you can only carry one at a time. And it costs $50,000, and once you've used up your Impulse Stone, you have to go back here to buy another one from the Pyrojack. But if you have the money, I definitely recommend keeping at least one on you at all times. What are we playing? This cool game you found outside the other night. How's it work? This exciting portable shooter from Atlas is simple to play, but impossible to master. Yes, they mean it. <laughs> Control, douse, and shoot down enemies in three stages of adrenaline-charged excitement. Seriously? I love how CLO comments on that. So, um... Uh, yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's a lot of info. I'm gonna cover that in its own video. Because it's a thing, and I've never actually beaten all three stages. I'm gonna have to as part of this playthrough because I want to show everything. I should also mention, this is actually timed. Once you pass a certain point in the main story, uh, you cannot play the CLO shmup game anymore. So, yeah, there are rewards for it, they're just gems. But uh, they are pretty difficult to get because you have to beat the high score, which is actually quite rough to get. Ah, so yeah, that's a bit... Well, we've probably already... Like, you've, you've probably already seen Berserk Mode at least once by now, but that's a bit of a hint towards Berserk Mode. 
So more and more of the Lokapala have decided to become tuners. Which is nice, because it seems like they really trust us now. Well, I mean, you know, we did that whole prison raid for them. They, they should trust us. And, yeah, obviously that's going to be painful to witness. Down here, though, there is the guy with the wife. I believe it's this guy. So, yeah, we rescued her from the prison. She was a little luckier than Fred's friend. In Legends and video games. Well, we're unaffected by fear, by fear status, even if we hit enemy immunities or had our weaknesses hit, so that's a good thing. Hell yeah, Roland turned himself into a demon just to help us. And it seems a lot of them have demonized themselves willingly. Okay, well, that's suddenly getting dark and existential. But, yeah, with that boss fight, a lot of story and um, just, uh, just some sort of shop things uh, after the fight covered. I'll see you all next time when we head into the lab. And hopefully we rescue Sarah for real. So, yeah, I will see you all then. See you later, hee-ho.